what if the seller files for bankruptcy after the closing of a subject to transaction? So the existing loans remain, buyer purchases it, and thereafter the seller ends up in bankruptcy. What happens in that case? So a couple of things to understand about a bankruptcy filing is that the, the minute a bankruptcy is filed, the assets no longer belong to the person that files for bankruptcy. They're allowed to possess certain assets, to use certain assets, but ultimately those assets technically belong to the trustee of the bankruptcy estate and they have control over those assets. And the bankruptcy trustee then makes determinations on what assets to keep and what assets to sell, or even on, under certain circumstances, what contracts to adhere to and what contracts to allow to uh, be breached or to do away with. So in the case of a creative finance transaction or a subject to transaction that's closed and bankruptcy is filed, uh, the first question you have to ask is, when was the filing? If the filing was within 90 days of the closing of the transaction on the, the creative financing, then the trustee has the ability to come in and argue what's called avoidable preference, which means, hey, uh, you and the debtor entered into a transaction within 90 days of their them filing for bankruptcy. And therefore, during that 90 day period, we, any contract within that 90 days uh, that's performed within those 90 days, that is considered avoidable preference. And the bankruptcy trustee can immediately set aside that contract and unwind it where the property in that case would go back to the seller to be held or controlled by the bankruptcy trustee and the buyer would be out. They would be returned whatever funds that they put into the transaction. So if they're out of pocket and they've paid the mortgage and things like that, they basically put the parties back in the status quo, back to where they were before the contract was entered into. And the, the bankruptcy trustee can do that. So if there's a property that's not subject to a homestead exemption, and there's equity there uh, that the bankruptcy trustee wants, they could set aside that transaction if it was within the 90 day period. And then they could take over that property and sell that property and pull out the equity for the purposes of the bankruptcy estate. If it was after the 90 day period, the bankruptcy trustee generally does not have that power unless there was some form of you know insider negotiation, some form of fraud or, or impropriety involved. But otherwise, if it were just a straight arm's length transaction, the bankruptcy trustee generally would not have the ability to set aside the contract. Instead, if it was a subject to transaction where, and, and my recommendation is always on subject to transactions to do a wrap. So you give the seller a promissory note, even if it's only for performance, which means I'm going to pay your mortgage payment for you. And then you secure that by a mortgage or, or deed of trust against the property. Well, in that case, the seller has now become a lender. So when they file for bankruptcy, the promissory note is actually an asset of the bankruptcy estate. In that case, the trustee can choose to do something with the note, to hold the note, to sell the note, or they could return the note to the seller and say, okay, there was no value with this note. So seller, you have the note and you can continue to be the lender and it's not affected by the bankruptcy. So on the what if, what if the seller files for bankruptcy after a subject to transaction is completed? To answer that question is number one, if it's filed within the 90 days, or if the, the contract is performed within the 90 days of filing, the bankruptcy trustee can come in and unwind the transaction. If it's after the 90 days, generally the contract will not be impacted or affected. And the only thing that you have to look out for is whether or not the bankruptcy trustee is going to sell the note to uh, somebody else because the note has value, or if the bankruptcy trustee is going to return the note to the seller, and then you just continue to pay the mortgage payment on the existing loans. The last caveat on that though is the bankruptcy filing could invoke a due on sale clause because the lender is going to give no, uh, receive notice of the bankruptcy filing because the debtor is still a borrower under the original loan. And in that case, the lender could come forward and invoke the due on sale clause. But it's the risk that you run when you do a subject to transaction it really uh, does, doesn't change. That risk doesn't change 
because of the bankruptcy, it's just some another thing that could potentially trigger that due on sale clause. Generally, the lender will not invoke the due on sale clause, will not pursue foreclosure as long as the payments are being made, but that's not um, definite. But that's another risk. I will tell you that the subject to addendum that I prepare for my clients states in there that the seller will reaffirm that existing loan so that hopefully that there will be no due on sale clause. There won't be any issues by the bankruptcy and reaffirming basically says, Hey, I understand that that loan is out there and I'm going to reaffirm it. I, I don't want it to be impacted or affected by the bankruptcy filing. So that's it. It's somewhat complicated. Hopefully it never happens, but what if a seller files for bankruptcy post uh, closing on a subject to transaction? There's the analysis.